How's it going everyone? I'm Carlos with Code Academy and in this video we'll learn how to use Visual Studio in order to create and develop a Razor Pages application. We'll start by generating a project template, explore the folder structure to see how the application was built, and then run it to see it live. Now Visual Studio is currently available for Windows and Mac, and if you're in a Linux you can use a separate program like Mono Develop, or you can use a .NET CLI which we'll cover later in this video. So let's start out by launching Visual Studio and right off the get-go we'll be provided with two options. One to open up a project and another to create a new one using a template. So we're going to go ahead and create a new one. So let's click on new. Now Visual Studio provides us with a wide range of templates depending on what kind of project we want to build. From multi-platform to create cross-platform applications to iOS for mobile development to .NET Core console applications and others. And the templates provide us a skeleton for the app that allow the user to get up and running in no time. So we'll be using ASP.NET Core to build our Razor Pages application. So let's go to the .NET Core tab and select Web Application under the App section. We'll click Next. So here we'll be able to select the target framework for our project. I'll be using NetCore 3.1, which I already have installed, so I'll be selecting that. And then we won't be using authentication for our app, so we can leave this as no authentication. Then we can click Next, where we'll be naming our project. So let's go ahead and name our project Test App, which will also be the name of our solution. Now, if you're wondering what exactly is the difference between a project and a solution, well, the project contains all the files required to compile and execute the code and is defined with a .cs project extension in the file name. And a solution is simply a container for one or more related projects and is defined by a .sln extension in the file name. Also make sure to keep note of the location, which is where your project will be stored in, since we'll be using the .NET CLI and navigating to that directory in order to run the application. So once we create this, a folder with our project name will be created containing our main project and solution folder. Let's go ahead and create it. Now we can see on the left hand side our solution pad here and I'll zoom in a bit more so you guys can see. Uh, in here we can view and manage the project or solution and the files contained within. So let's expand our project to see what folders and files are created. We'll see we have a dependencies folder, a pages folder, properties, www root, app settings, program, uh, and then startup.cs. So let's go ahead and go over what, sh what is included in each one and what they're used for. So the first folder we'll look into is the dependencies folder. And this folder simply contains the framework and packages that are required for the application to run. Next thing we'll look into is the pages folder. Now this folder contains all the pages required for our project. Each Razor page is made up of two files, a .cs HTML file, which contains Razor syntax, which is a combination of HTML markup and c -sharp code, and a .chtml.cs file, which holds uh, the logic and behavior for each page. We'll find a launch settings.json file within the properties folder, and in this file we have the settings that are going to be used when we run the .NET Core application. The most important point that you need to keep in mind is that these settings will only be used with your local development machine. Also note that launch settings.json is only used by Visual Studio. If there are settings that your application needs to use, you'll be storing them in app settings.json, which we'll look into in a bit. Now the www root folder contains all the static files that the application can use. So any HTML or CSS or JavaScript files will be stored in here. We cannot place any C Sharp or Razor files in here. By default, Razor Pages uses the CSS library called Bootstrap, which can also be found in this folder under the lib directory. All application settings will be contained in the app settings.json file, from a database connection string to an access token. ASP.NET Core will load the values from this file and from the configuration file related to your current environment. Now, there will be two main environments you'll be working under. Production, which describes the environment you're providing to the customers. And development, which is the environment which developers work on. So if you're in a development environment, it will load up the app settings.development.json file. And if you're in a production environment, it will load up the app settings.json file. In our project, we'll find that there are a few settings already created for us. For example, the log level property under logging specifies the minimum level to log for selected categories. 
By default, our application will log anything under the information category, which is given when a method ends normally. It's also important to note that any changes made here will require us to restart the application to take effect. Next file we have is a program.cs file, which is a C sharp file that contains the entry point for the program. And in this file, the main method is the first method which gets invoked. Lastly, we have the startup.cs file, which is a C sharp file containing the startup class where the application's features and services are configured. So if you go ahead and look at our application for that file, and we look at this configure method, which is this whole block of code, this method is called by the runtime and it's used to configure the HTTP request pipeline. So we can see how it starts out by allowing redirection, allowing the use of static files, the use of routing authorization if required, all the way up to giving access to any endpoints that we create. Now that we have an understanding of our folder structure, let's go ahead and run the application to see what happens. So let's go ahead and click the run button on the upper left corner, which will compile our code and run the application. Now we'll see that a pop-up comes up saying that there is no HTTPS development certificate found. In a gist, an HTTPS development certificate ensures that any information that is being passed from your browser to the server a site is hosted on is secure and encrypted. Now there's a lot more to it than this, from encryption to digital signatures, but for now all you need to know is that a certificate simply allows traffic to travel safely from a browser to a server. So let's go ahead and install and trust this certificate and that dialog will display asking for your password. So enter your password and select OK. Once the build is successful, Visual Studio launches your browser and navigates to localhost 5001. And we're able to see our app template application. Now let's go ahead and run our application from the command line using .NET CLI. Although it's not necessary and we can build and run our application from Visual Studio, it will still be useful for more advanced techniques in the future, such as restoring dependencies for a given application or maybe updating specific packages. Now, in order to do so, we first need to install the .NET Core SDK, which is found in .NET.Microsoft.com slash download. Go ahead and download the latest build. If you're using Windows, you can launch the Visual Studio installer. From here, we'll be able to modify installation programs so we can click on modify. And in here, we can really customize Visual Studios with setting up packages for the platform. In our case, we want the SDK, so we can navigate to the Individuals Component tab and check it from the list under the .NET tab. You'll see that I already have it installed, so I don't need to modify it. Once you're set, you can modify Visual Studio, and it will install the SDK for you. OK, so back in our project, make sure your application is not running. You can stop your application from running by clicking on the stop button on the upper left hand side. Let's open up a new tab and let's open up a terminal. You can use whatever terminal program you're comfortable with. I'll be using iTerm for mine. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is navigate to our project directory. So I know my project is under our project directory in my home folder. So let's go ahead and navigate to projects test app. And here we'll find that we have our solution file and our project. So let's go ahead and go inside our project and then I'll clear this and then list what's contained in that directory. And we'll find all the files and folders that we were talking about earlier that essentially allow us to run our application. Next thing we wanna do is check if .NET is installed and we can do this by running the command .NET. So if it was installed properly, it will give you some information about the usage with some options you can provide to the command. If it wasn't installed properly, you would probably receive an error that says something like .NET is not recognized as an internal or external command. So you would have to go through the installation process again. So once you confirm that the .NET is installed, you can go ahead and run .NET run. This will log some information indicating that our, the port our app is running at. And now we can actually navigate to the same URL, localhost 5001, and see our template application running. So you can see here the logged information about the ports and that it's actually running successfully. So let's go ahead and go to localhost 5001 and you'll see our application is running. Now you can shut down the application by going to your terminal and just doing control C. 
Now, if you're curious about other commands that are available, we can also run .NET help. And let me clear our terminal here. We can run .NET help in order to actually give us information about some SDK commands that we can run for our application, from adding new packages with add to managing development certificates with dev certs. You can also just run it by doing .NET dash dash H, which will be the same command. Visual Studio is filled with many useful features that will make building and structuring an application a very fluid and streamlined process. We'll be going more in depth into a lot of features provided as we go through the lessons, but I hope this video gave you a better understanding on how a template application is built with Visual Studio. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.